Coming to you live from my apartment, it's Rob has a podcast, and now here's the guy who's a former New Yorker, current Californian, I am Rob Sisternino. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. It's like Christmas Eve, the not, not, not Christmas Abbott, uh, Christmas Eve, the night before, the triple eviction coming up on Thursday night. We've got psychedelic salamanders to talk about and much more as we get ready for the Big Brother event of the summer on Thursday night. Very excited to uh, be back here with all of you. First, let's uh, welcome in to talk about everything that's going to happen. She's so pumped up for the triple eviction. If only they didn't tell them it was coming. Here's Melissa Denny. Melissa, how are you? I'm doing great. I do feel like it's Christmas Eve, essentially. I feel like it's the calm before the storm. We're all just like, okay, we know what's coming. Let's get to it. So I am very excited for tomorrow night. But you ready you know, to start opening presents? Yes, I'm ready to start opening presents already. Like, you know, forget Christmas morning. Let's open them now. Christmas Eve. It's fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're excited to have uh, back here with us. Uh, unfortunately, his Islanders uh, did not go all the way, but there's always next year. Uh, disappointment gets us ready to talk about Big Brother. Uh, here's Matt Ligori. Matt, how are you? Yes. Uh, former New Yorker on the panel, current New Yorker on the panel. We're representing all aspects of this. Uh, a couple of Californians, maybe, or at least at least one. Uh, happy to be here on National Not Podcast a Cody Day, Californian? Robbie. Yeah. Yes, uh, not not a Cody California. Yes, National no. Podcast Day. Uh, yes, happy yes, happy uh, day to you. Happy International Podcast Day to everybody out there. You know, I do feel like that earlier and earlier each year you start hearing the podcasts in the department stores, but uh, mm -hmm. you know, it yeah. finally is here, and a great uh, day to celebrate here with you, Matt. Can't wait. Uh, like Melissa said, very excited to get to tomorrow night. Rip that bandaid off and get some of these people out of this house already. I'm sick of them. All right. Uh, and then we also have uh, back with us to talk about everything that's going on. Uh, was uh, the, the, I'll talk about everybody's uh, sports teams. Uh, not a great night for her Ravens on Monday night. Uh, it's Mari Forth. Mari, how are you? Hi, guys. Thanks, Rob, for uh, rubbing salt in that wound. Hey. I was just getting over it. Uh, I was going to say... Company. Mm. I was going to say I'm happy to be here with you. <laughs> we'll distract you. We'll distract you to talk about some Big Brother. No, yes. thank you, guys. I'm so glad to be here after the episode. I mean, we're here. The season's still happening. I mean, if I wasn't on here, I'd be watching Love Island. The finale. But, yeah. Yeah, the finale. But for you, Rob, I'll be here. I'll, thank I'll watch you, Big Mari. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just for you. I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> good to have you back here with us as we talk about everything. We'll take your questions as well. Uh, go ahead. And it's not too late. I tweeted out the link at Rob Sisterino. You can reply and ask your questions uh, and get them in the show for later on. Uh, it was a night of uh, seeing David and Kevin on the block. A little bit of a slow go. And then we got a very wacky otev competition uh we thought that maybe we we're going to be seeing dr will but melissa no dr will uh <laughs> psychedelic salamander instead i feel like this is the takeover twist like all over again where it's like it starts mm -hmm. out and they're like this is going to be all week long or like all every week we're going to have another takeover and then they did it once and that was it <laughs> and i feel like that's basically what this is i really thought that either he was going to be there for the hoh competition or he was going to be there for the veto and honestly I, I thought they might just like have a recording of him or something, mm -hmm. but they didn't even involve him they at have all. Some of those. It's just they're, very they're odd. Time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just yeah. very odd that for each of these competitions, though, they're not utilizing Dr. Will. Yeah, especially yeah. well, Ota, we always get the crazy character. So I wasn't really that surprised. But then when I did go on Twitter, people were like, Where's Dr. Will? I was like, Oh yeah, I forgot he's supposed to be supposed doing to be part something of it. Totally, I thought at least yeah. they'd have him like introduce, you know, the salamander or whatever. Yeah. They like had the salamander on the neighbor balcony. Is there, and, is there like, any yeah, possibility that Will was in the suit? Or nope. are we counting that out? I don't think it was a suit. I think it was like a, uh, I thought it was like a puppet. Animatron, I mean, yeah. yeah, it usually is, but I don't know. It, it was like, like a, a perfect mascot type. Yeah. I would, I love that idea if we have some sort of masked singer where <laughs> then he takes the, 
But uh, also on uh, reality right. TV. Something tonight, else I would have been watching tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I really thought they were going to do for Otab that Dr. Will was the neighbor. And I thought he was going to be like, uh, like, uh, hey, neighbor, can I borrow a, uh, a cup of sugar? And like, I have to go and like look for something like that he was borrowing. But no, uh, no, Dr. Will. Maybe we'll see a, a sp split second of him during the triple eviction uh, coming up on thursday but i guess uh let's let's talk about what we ended up seeing tonight uh mm -hmm. cody's nominations it was david and it was kevin uh mm -hmm. but we do get a lot of the nicole danny christmas uh subplot which is going on in the season where all the guys in the house uh for the most part they're all working together but this big uh, this trio there's a lot of intrigue between nicole danny christmas and uh danny she wants to play in veto just so she can win prizes uh because she really wants christmas to go home but nicole franzel says not so fast <laughs> melissa i've been talking about this for a while i think that nicole realizes that she needs to make throw danny under the bus for all of the things that have gone wrong for her this season both maybe to herself and in the diary room especially yeah i mean it did seem like we were kind of heading that direction with like the i'm not following danny's plans anymore these were all her plans she convinced me to do this and that and really it's like did she convince you to do that or was it kind of like you did it together and you kind of agreed to it. So, I mean, I don't know. I, I agree that she, she's pushing the narrative. I don't believe the narrative, but you know, it, it, it kind of works. I mean, it does make Danny look worse than Nicole, I guess, in regards to the Ian thing and possibly the Christmas thing. I, uh, I don't know. But she separates herself from Danny, and where does she go from here? That means all of her eggs are in Cody's basket. Like, this would have been a move to make if, guess who? If Ian was still in the house. If Ian was still in the house, this mm -hmm. would be the correct way to go. But no, you've been playing Cody's game. Both of them have been playing Cody's game. Ian's gone. You want to turn on Danny. Now that means you are dependent on Cody to get you to the end. And he has four options <laughs> that you don't. So I just think that Nicole and Danny, they missed their opportunity. They let that their alliance dictate the people to go out who were closer to them. I, I don't know if we're going to get to the whole Kevin Nicole thing with, um, that happened, but even Nicole was like, I think I want to keep Kevin this week. And Cody's like, no, we got to get rid of Kevin. Like this is the third time that Nicole has come to Cody and said, hey, I think I want this person to stay. And they said, no, this person needs to stay. And now you're going to be standing around looking like, oh, wait, where are all my allies? They're gone. Yeah, I think it's it also been... interesting. Sorry, yeah. I was just going to say, I think it's also interesting that on a previous podcast, I believe, Reb, you pointed out that the three remaining women are each women who want to be the last remaining woman yeah, among right. the men. And we literally are watching that play out in this mm -hmm. episode tonight where each of the women are like, I need to get rid of this woman before I get rid of this. Like, it's like Nicole's like, I got to get rid of Danny. And Danny's like, I got to get rid of Christmas. And Christmas is like, I got to get rid of Danny. So they all want to get rid of each other so that they all can be the men. last woman standing. And it's honestly, <laughs> it's just, it's embarrassing to women. Well, I'll stick up for Danny a little bit. I, I think that Danny is fine to be her and Nicole. I think that she is uh, specifically going after Christmas. I think she wanted Davon to stay also in her perfect world. So I, I don't want to brand Danny necessarily as being completely that I need to get all the other women out of the house. Yeah, it's definitely been more of Nicole and Christmas way more than Danny uh, in terms of that aspect. Not to, you know, Danny has been a mess. She's had plenty of without. other problems. Yeah, she, yeah, she's her game has has plenty to dissect uh, as far as like who she's come after the whole Ian of it all, like Mari mentioned. Yes. Uh, so you know, it's been very frustrating now that we are down to this. I'm like, I, I can't help but like look around the house and see. Yeah, there are going to be five guys still in the house. These four that just don't seem to be able to be touched in any way, shape or form. Cody, Enzo. Memphis and Tyler, they're just sitting pretty while all of the women continue to target each other. And it's, it's, I think maybe I'm past the point of it being frustrating because at this point I'm like, all right, you did this to yourselves. And when you all go out, I'm not even going to feel bad at this point. When one of these four guys yes. win, which is fully inevitable at this point, mm -hmm. I, I have nothing left within me that is going to be like, oh, I'm going to be like, yeah, duh. 
<laughs> so are you saying there, there's no other outcome than the winner of this season is going to be? And I, and I don't know for look mm-hmm. that if you've, if, if you figured this out, then uh, that's well, I'm no uh, tearing in my four pages of spreadsheet. Here, no, but, uh... but is that, uh, is this how we should be looking at this? That there are only, there are only four contenders to win this season. And that is Cody, Tyler, Enzo and Memphis. I would put money on it. I would put a lot of money on it. That's what it's yeah. looking like because um like I said Danny and Nicole they missed their they missed their moment. Like you go back to BB Can 5 when Queen Ica was told, "Hey, I think it was an Emily and Dylan vote when she said, "I want this person to stay." And they the her group was like, "No, we're going to get this person to stay." That was the second time in a row the person that she wanted to stay did not stay. She realized, "Hey, I'm at the bottom of this alliance." She flipped it and got Netta out. And then she decimated her alliance minus Mr. Kevin Martin. So mm-hmm. like that's what you have to do. You have to pick your spots. How can Nicole and Danny see that the last three weeks they have had no control over who has gone home and still feel comfortable that they're going to be sitting in one of those final two chairs. I don't, I don't get it except for them just being extremely comfortable. Yep. Melissa, we've seen Nicole sort of like wake up and smell the coffee, but for Danny, has she like, has it sunk in that things have not been going well for like the last six weeks? Not, not from my, uh, not what, what I'm <laughs> so I, have to say, I really, I honestly, it, it's like very confusing to me that she isn't noticing what's going on. I mean, it seems like she's kind of on the outs of game talk a little bit. And it just seems like people aren't really giving her information. Like everyone is kind of, I don't know. They're, they're not just being, they're not being honest with her. They're not being open with her. And she isn't taking that and going the next step, which is like, okay, hmm, they're not being honest or open with me, or at least seemingly they're not giving me any information. Next step is okay. They don't trust me. They're going, they're going after me. I have a problem here and we're not yep. getting or like bridging that gap. What's not happening for her. And I don't really know why, unless she's just like so overconfident for no reason. Yeah. I don't know. You know, Mari, I have to give uh, Christmas some credit here because I think that she, uh, as we're talking about self-awareness, I I think that she seemed to have uh, enough self-awareness to know, hey, I could go up on the block this week if I don't end up uh, being part of this veto. Like, I I think that that I I didn't get prior to the episode tonight in these diary rooms that she necessarily knew how much trouble she could have potentially been in. It seemed like that she realized that this was a possibility. She could go on the block. I mean, at this point, it's kind of just process of elimination. You know, you have a six person alliance. You know that there are two people that aren't in that alliance, uh, then Enzo. And you know, those two people are going on the block. If one of those two people come down, somebody has to go up. Cody, with Cody being the HOH, Christmas should know she is the furthest degree of separation from Cody. She's not Nicole or Danny, she's not Enzo. Um, and I think she th- she knows that Memphis and Cody are pretty close. So, I mean, it's not – I'm not going to give her a whole bunch of brownie points for figuring it out <laughs> for several reasons. But, I mean, it, it's just a, a logical step, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, her being worried about it and, and her reaction um, luckily didn't, you know, scare anybody away because, okay, so Cody put you up. You're supposed to be secure in your six person alliance. You have to fake that you are, oh, throw me up. It's fine. It's whatever. You know, don't tell him that, but you know, you got to be confident. So, I mean, she saw the writing on the wall. She knew that she needed to possibly win. If not, she was going to go up, but I think she should have still just maintained her composure. If she went up, she could talk to a whole bunch of people. It's not that big of a deal. I mean, not this week at least. Okay. Uh, we saw Kevin and David have a conversation and I do feel like that, uh, you know, big brother 22 has had a lot of things that haven't gone well, but I feel like that they have done a good job this season. Uh, maybe not every episode, but you know, once or twice a week, they give us like a real conversation between the house guests. And, uh, we got to hear how Kevin felt like that he didn't really fit in with uh, anybody in this group and uh, felt like that he didn't necessarily wasn't able to bond necessarily with the black house guests or felt like that he wasn't necessarily considered to be 
part of the uh, what the Black House guests were going through, but also felt like did not feel like that he was accepted by the other group. Uh, it wasn't even really uh, discussed also that Kevin is gay as well, which is an, uh, another part of like his Nobody intersectionality. Knew. Yeah. <laughs> no. uh, but I, man, I thought that this was, uh, you know, a, a really uh, compelling conversation between Kevin and David. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we I was worried after Kaser was gone and after Davon was gone that we were going to lose this kind of stuff because that's where like the meat of all of these great conversations were coming from early on in the season. Uh Kaser going out and then, you know, uh, with Davon going out this week and and Bailey's been gone, it's like the people who were talking about really important things and not about like uh uh Californians not being real. Uh <laughs> like that was concerning, but yeah, the uh, what yeah. David, uh, what what Kevin was talking about was uh, fully worthwhile uh, uh to, yeah. you know, to, to be expressing on his own end for us to be hearing nobody wants to feel like their identity is not valid in the eyes of everybody else around them like you want to you know you want people to see you for who you are and not you know the, like that conversation with Devon definitely struck a chord with him like he talked about it uh, in this conversation he brought it up a couple of different times and I, I believe that him and Devon had uh, hashed it out I don't want to yeah. 100% like confirm that but yeah. I think that they talked about it and you know they got back on the same page but um, it was nice to at least you know get more of that like real life talk brought into it when it's kind of been slipping away from uh, the picture of the show. So, yeah. yeah. How about David with the pep talk also? He's like, you're Kevin Campbell. That's who you are. Yeah. And so, like, I thought his question to David was pretty interesting when he said, oh, David, um, how do you how would you define me? And then David had the right answer. He was like, how did you want to want me to define you? I know coming from the black community for me, whenever I have mixed friends or mixed people that I know, we always ask we always ask what do you want to be presented as because each person is an individual shocker including black people people are individuals so when david said well what do you want to present as what do you you know what do you consider yourself and and kevin was like well i don't really you know i know i'm i'm mixed and i'm japanese and david said well that's that's what it is you're black and you're japanese and that's what you are and it's different with everybody like um, I know mixed people who who uh, say that they are black. They they'll just claim black because that's their identity. And then I know other people who are saying I'm biracial. Like it's really how you want to be perceived. And with Davon and Kevin, Davon comes in from her perspective. And if I'm going to step into her shoes for two seconds as a black woman who is also about the same complexion as her, when when she says, I look at the winner circle and I don't see myself, that she's talking about us. She's talking about like a black person who's like a full black person. It does not mean she is trying to take away Kevin's identity. She's saying from her perspective, she doesn't see anybody who looks like her. And are my... um my experience is not going to be the same as Kevin's experience for multiple reasons because of his race and eth ethnicity, because of his sexual identity and stuff like that. And it's two different ex experiences and to, to act like it's not is that's more racial than anything, I think. And it's almost like that answer that Julie gave to uh, Entertainment Weekly when Entertainment Weekly said, oh, Davon talks about not seeing winners like her. And Julie went and said, well, I don't think Josh or June or Casey would say, those people are all people of color. Yes, they are. You cannot take that away from them. But their experience is not the exact same as my experience or Davon's experience or even hell, the experience between the three of them. So it's just, it's it's not anything to nitpick over. And I'm glad that they hashed it out. And I'm glad that Devon was like, oh, I'm sorry, I did it. I was not trying to offend you when I was saying, I, when I was saying, when I wasn't counting you as a black person, I just did it, you know, think that's what you identified as. So I thought it was a great conversation to have on <laughs> primetime television. I hope more people understand the situation and don't just be like, oh, Davon was 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 racist for not seeing Kevin. And that's that's not the that's not the case. It's just different experiences. We are different people. We're all different people and we all have different experiences. It's been a sorry. Well, no, no, that was. Exactly <laughs> right. I appreciate uh, you uh, giving us all that. It, it's yeah. been such a weird season where I feel like that we've had these moments of like real uh, conversation and talking about uh, social issues mm -hmm. from a lot of the people that have been on the bottom in this game. And then the other half of the house, <laughs> the other half of the house, which, which has not been on the bottom, 
I can't think of one serious conversation we've seen from them the entire the entire season. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's not Anytime. just that's not game talk. Yeah, and you know it's been brought up here and there, and like little like things that have been dropped from uh, maybe Enzo, maybe Danny, of like, hmm, look at like the nominees, like who's been going on the block uh, consistently and whatnot. And then they'll be like, you know, yeah, like the optics might not look great, and then some people just completely dismiss it. So the conversations that they're having are much different from the conversations that the people on the bottom are having, mm -hmm. and the way that they're showing it. Like, I'm glad we're seeing the Kevin stuff, but this has been an issue for forever but especially like in mm. in last year this year like th these topics that the fans are talking about like the the graphics that i'm sure you've seen go, go around twitter of like look at the nominees for all eight weeks of this season that's not going to come up on the show they're not giving us that and that's you know disappointing i don't know yeah. you know if, if we can ever get to a point where cbs is willing to like show like yeah look at this like show that graphic on the show we would love that like let me see that and then you know have them have a dr about that but <laughs> baby steps i don't know <laughs> yeah well christmas and nicole are gonna have a conversation and uh, i thought this started in such a weird way of christmas walks into the into the big brother house and, and this is uh, that to me that the big brother has such a fantasy uh to me because i see like that the, the david had this at one point nicole has this she's just sitting in a room by herself and uh nobody's nobody's talking to them just such a a, a, a you know world that i wish i could imagine myself in where you're, you're sitting there alone with your thoughts and then here comes uh christmas who comes in and and nicole says this i'm like sweating yeah, she's uh, sweaty, and it's just, and then from from taking a shower, and then they go into that conversation. I don't know why the editors wanted to leave that whole part of the conversation in there. Rob, I don't know how you can say they don't have deep conversations. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, they're talking about the real stuff. Yeah, um, they're talking about real problems, real issues. She's sweaty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, Melissa, a war is about to start, and Nicole wants to make sure she's on the right side of that war with Christmas because she has to she has to do a lot for for Christmas. Listen. If it's in question, I shut that crap down. Yeah, I shut that crap down that I hear about you. <laughs> wow. Just, is it from Danny? I like the dramatic music underlying that. I shut that crap down. That it's like crap oh my God. shut down so hard. <laughs> and then it was Danny, wasn't it? <laughs> yes, it was. It was. It was. It was Danny. We I appreciate feel like all the work you're putting in, Nicole. Thank you so much for. Uh... It is not a great idea, I think, for Nicole to be revealing that to Christmas. I just feel like there's bad moves made all around. I feel like if she doesn't want Christmas to go, I mean, it, the only way that this is beneficial for her is if she actively wants Danny to go and she actively mm -hmm. wants Christmas and Danny to be at each other's throats. Otherwise, it's like, keep everyone calm, pretend like you don't know anything. You know what I mean? Just like yeah. let it ride and Bring see what happens. Bring them together. Yeah. Have a said, conversation in the same room. Like you need mm -hmm. both of them right now. Yes. Uh, she's right. willing to kind of like throw Danny under the bus to Cody, to Christmas. Like there are big parts of the game coming up. You need both of them. And if you were actually playing a strong game, you would unite this group together mm -hmm. rather yep. than continue to, you know, kind of like just throwing uh, them under the bus. I mean, this, we could go on for hours of me having mm -hmm. a hard time understanding people that defend Nicole and her game, but <laughs> maybe that's another time. <laughs> yeah, okay. this conversation with Nicole and Christmas, it kind of is just setting up the, like, I know we are we always wait. We're like, oh, wait till it gets to the big alliance. Then it's going to get fun because they're going to turn on each other. No, this is basically Nicole saying hey, you know, she needs to go. She needs to go. This is them starting to establish a pecking order, and that is not fun. Cody said it in this this episode like i want what do you say i want kevin to go then danny then danny and christmas something like christmas danny so it's like this is this is setting up pecking orders this isn't a war that we've been w waiting for it's a continued pecking order i don't mm -hmm. want to see that i don't want to see that <laughs> nope well yeah the, the war is gonna kick off tomorrow mari <laughs> will it will it rob <laughs> you don't think it will um, I don't know. I think now that they've been warned, um, like Taryn said this morning, like now that they've kind of been warned, what's been happening on the feeds has been more entertaining than probably what we're going to get tomorrow. But mm -hmm. I'm excited to see a triple, double, 
double double triple eviction mm -hmm. yeah so <laughs> yeah so we'll just see. for people who uh you know are not keeping up with the uh the live feed that there there has been a warning given to the house guests so oh, something along the lines of uh three uh think three steps ahead so they, <laughs> they have been te it has been teased to the house guests about uh what's to come on uh thursday night so uh, we'll we'll talk about that more my in bad, detail as, as, as we go along no it's, it does funny. <laughs> um so uh <laughs> let's talk about something else that people uh may have already heard on the podcast if you're a listener to the slop uh we had a uh, really fun edition of the uh slop uh this week uh with Chappelle and uh scott yeager talking about everything uh going on in the big brother house but it was two weeks ago with mike bloom uh we talked about how cody doesn't know stuff including what does it mean when you are from a certain state new jerseyan i'm a floridian a floridian did yeah. you just make that up no <laughs> <laughs> you made it up okay melissa the zingbot did tell Cody he had an IQ of 10 and we talked about that uh, that I think Cody is a great player really good player at this game but I also think that he is somebody he does not know facts uh <laughs> that I saw that after we talked about this on the slop someone compared him to the John Ham character from 30 Rock yeah. that's actually uh i would believe that that's very accurate he's very handsome does he need to know facts he doesn't need to know any of that stuff really it's good to just live in his uh, what was it his uh handsome bubble or something they called it on 30 rock and basically no one will tell him that he's bad at anything or dumb because yeah. he just is so pretty Oh, well, fine. <laughs> that was a preview, guys. That's the preview <laughs> of the feeds for the next few weeks. I hope oh, uh, everybody's <laughs> this was from ready. This a couple of weeks ago, though, too. Also, though, uh, like, but also, what animal was he thinking of in regards to Texan? Okay, I get to I get to explain Texan. this one for you. Yeah, so this is, okay. A Texan is an animal. Okay, so he's getting confused because the Houston Texans football team that their that their their mascot uh, is so on the side of the helmet. Uh, Scott, are you able to bring up a a Houston <laughs> Texans helmet real quick? Because we all <laughs> rather be talking about football. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm pretty is sure. Is it a recognizable animal, or is it like a picture no, of it's a, a bear it's a or something? Football so. team called the Houston Texans. It's just a bull thing. Yeah, and uh, it's, it's kind of like a a bull that's uh, red, white, and blue. Uh, if we have a the, the, maybe uh, Cody has Deshaun Watson on his fantasy football team, uh, but that's what he is thinking is an animal. But no, we are we're not Texans. We're Americans. That's that's, <laughs> that's what Cody's philosophy of all this was. Uh, yeah, that was a great segment on the slop. I was surprised to see it. You know, a whole two weeks later during the show, but uh, <laughs> gotta squeeze weeks. that in whenever you can. Are they yeah. talking about Longhorns? No, not it wasn't Longhorns. So here, yeah, there you go. Houston, Houston oh, Texans. I see. see the there logo. Is no way. There is no the way that. <laughs> That I is, I, I, I would second. bet my life. I would bet my life. That's what he's talking about. Yeah, a uh, Texan is an animal. He sees that. A Texan is an animal. Okay, that makes I, me. Okay, this whole time I was like, okay, he must be thinking like, you know, like a Tasmanian devil or something, you know, like something that sounds kind of like Texan, but not really. But if you see that image and it says Houston Texans, you're not going to be like, oh, that's a Texan. It's like this bull <laughs> thing. Well, like, it's just, Cody. <laughs> there is no way. Yeah, that's, I, I, I like, bet that's what he thinks. For me. I mean, so you're I, saying, could it, I could see it, but so yeah. You're saying no. his IQ is not bouncing up to a uh, 20 or a 22. I don't think so. I don't know. And then not saying he's a bad player. He just doesn't know facts. He's mm -hmm. a good player. I mean, I've said all along that that Zingbot Zing was great for him. I think that mm -hmm. to be called dumb or to be told that you're not strategizing or something like that, if if you are in fact strategizing, not if you're actually not strategizing and if in fact you're dumb. But if they if Zingbot calls you out for something like that, something non-threatening, mm -hmm. I mean that's great for you. Um and BB Can Six Paris was told when they had when they did that competition where they had to like spray the drink on everyone's face and vote for like who they thought was 
X, mm -hmm. this X, that, whatever. Uh, they said she was what the the dumbest so, or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, and she was just like, what, what? And in the diary room, she was like, thank God they said that about me. <laughs> I'm not dumb. I mean, so yeah. and that is what you want is you want everyone to not suspect you. You want them to not think of you as a threat. You want them to think that you're dumb. So that way they don't see you coming. Mm -hmm. The challenge every season, like the show, the challenge has a trivia contest, a competition. It's like one of the main challenges that it's like pretty much a staple of every season. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised that Big Brother hasn't done anything like that to, on like a consistent level because you would get segments like this built into the competition. Mm -hmm. Like it's very basic trivia questions, uh, you know, not, not not like very hard textbook questions, but just things that people would generally possibly know. Uh, mm -hmm. And they would get a lot of uh, a lot of content out of Cody. But then again, maybe Cody will end up on the challenge one day and uh, compete in that anyway. But maybe that, would, that would be a good mix. Except when they ask somebody like, "What's the capital of South Dakota?" and the, they ask the other person, "Please spell chair on the challenge." Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, and sometimes that happens, and then maybe Cody will be able to spell chair C H I A R, and uh, <laughs> and we'll get a fun di uh, dr about it. Those questions. Right. Oh my god. <laughs> Well, let's uh, talk about our veto pick because uh, we get to see who's going to play in the power of veto. Uh, Cody is going to pick Nicole F. Uh, I like that mm -hmm. they have, uh, you know, not redone still, the chips. Yeah, yeah she's still that. she's still Nicole F. Kevin picks Tyler and David. He <laughs> picks Enzo to play. And that is going to set Christmas right off. Call me if I'm a replacement nom. If not, call me on Thursday. I'm not going to call you at all. <laughs> right. Yeah, I think we're good. Like She didn't have to do all that. Yeah. Maybe yeah, Julie will that. call her on Thursday. <laughs> oh, right. Hey, Christmas, are you available to come host today? You'd have to leave the game, but uh, mm -hmm. you want to yeah. hop out here? Put a oh, mask on? To be fair, I guess if I, if I had thoughts that I'm going to be put up on the block and then the one chance I have to possibly save myself and not be backdoored is right. just like not given to me. I'm not presented with the opportunity to even try. Mm -hmm. Then obviously I would be upset too, but yeah. you know, I mean mm -hmm. the, the odds of her actually going home this week were like very slim. So I mean, yeah. as much as Enzo wants us to believe he would actually do something in this game, right. I don't believe it. And actually I'll believe it when I see it. So I, I do think, you know, the oh, cuddle puddle that ensued right after that of, of, <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Christmas, <laughs> we love you. It's okay that you're not playing for me. I just never get picked. Like, uh, really, really? This is what we're spending yeah. time on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If yeah. she was really the comp B she thinks she was, she would want to not play in competition. So she doesn't up her profile and up her target because people will be like, she's winning. And again, showing how upset you are to a house full of your whole entire alliance kind of makes them think hey does she not trust us or what's mm -hmm. going on so i i didn't like this move she just her. wants to win <laughs> yeah exactly and that's what she's gonna play up i'm just a competitor i just want to be a part of stuff but it's just i don't mm -hmm. know i don't think i didn't think that was necessary <laughs> she I think she would play, you know, if if it's kind of like the reverse Rachel Riley, like she would play a season of Big Brother if she only had to play the competitions, like if she couldn't win any <laughs> money, if she had to be that player who came in to sub for somebody yeah. like Rachel, she would play all the competitions and then she would go out and live in the neighbor's house for the entire week. She would do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Matt, do you think that Christmas has a future on the challenge? No. Why not? Um, because I won't let it happen. I don't know. Uh, I don't know enough about oh, it, but I feel God. like that she is uh, a fierce competitor, uh, a known crazy person. She gets in huge fights <laughs> with people. Right for the challenge. Yeah. Can we like, I, I agree with you, but if we like put this energy out into the universe, they might hear you and it. and uh, and try to make this happen. I yeah, I I, she I can see it. I, I totally like can age see limit. It. Like I think she's uh in her late thirties. Yeah. Is that sort of like uh do, is it like uh actually like if we end up with like another challenge bring, like, rival format and they Mark can convince Long's Dave Long to come back. Yeah. I, She's oh, too old no. for women because if you're, they don't seem to bring a, back a lot of older women, but they'll let Johnny Bananas come back 20 million times if he wants to. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But yeah. I, uh, I, I, I don't think it's a 0% chance, but I want it to be a 0% chance. So that's just same. where my head's at. It's, and I, Josh I, like, can reunite. Yeah. They could have done that this season, but, you know, Josh was, uh, yeah. Hey, got a party. Okay. All mm -hmm. right. 
Then uh, we see Enzo one more time, and Enzo is telling us about how he really wants this veto to be played. Uh, Melissa, Enzo has told us so many times he just he wants to make a big move, yo. Yeah, I, I don't believe it for a second. I think that he knows we want to hear that. He yep. knows that the audience is like, oh, man, if Enzo could just win this one. And it's like, no, that's not going to happen. Like, I, I can almost guarantee that if Enzo won it, like as much as he wants to say on the feeds or whatever or on the in the diary room that he would actually make a move, use the veto, <laughs> have him backdoor someone else. Like, I just don't believe it at all. Like, mm -hmm. I'll, right. let's wait and see. But. At this yeah. point, I've seen nothing from Enzo. Exactly. Enzo's like me all through the lockdown when I'm telling my wife all the things like, oh, man, I wish we could be out tonight. <laughs> oh, man, how great would that so be? Crazy things. Oh, we could be at the beach right <laughs> now. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. If only I didn't yeah. have to be stuck in this house. Yeah. wait for this to be over. <laughs> uh, be out there. Spending money, hanging out, doing good stuff. Okay. They gave us a lot of Enzo tonight too. They gave us a, a lot. lot of this Enzo narrative. <laughs> I'm like, I don't oh, want anyone wow. else. Somebody, I mean, I mean honestly, somebody's they, buying this narrative, I guess. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they wanted to create suspense about yeah. is Christmas going to be backdoored? Enzo mm -hmm. almost wins it. And if he wins it, he's saying he's going to backdoor someone. And Danny, there's a discussion of Danny wanting to get Christmas out. Oh my gosh, what's going to happen? Yeah. Yeah. And Christmas being all upset in the diary room or nervous mm -hmm. in the diary room. And, you know, her whole, her whole diary room session at the end where she's just like, you know, well, you know, I'm still here. I live to see another week or whatever, as if there was really a chance that she was going to be going home. I mean, yeah, people can talk, people can say what they want, but I didn't see a scenario where Christmas was leaving this week. I mean, yeah, well, leaving the, this first the, eviction, maybe. The yeah. acting in this show has just gotten so bad. And mm -hmm. it, like, it is just, it is really becoming a scripted show in those diary rooms at this point. It's just not good. And, and Enzo, Enzo has known, correct me if I'm wrong, Enzo has known about the committee for at least four weeks now, right? Cody told him on Tyler's HOH. Tyler's I can't remember the or, no, 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 I don't right. remember the exact. But he, was, I mean, he, yeah, he, he has known, he's about, known it. about it yeah, for, a, for while. a while. So I'm, uh, I mean, for him, he's in a good spot. So he doesn't really need to do anything at all so that's why yeah. he can give this lip service about and pander to us fans and his play style is one that you can you, you he gives you hope to everybody so then when he says in the diary room it, it matches unlike you know nicole kind of lip service so but i mean he's really taking a gamble coming down to him and the committee but he seems to be maneuvering himself in a way that this is the right move for him. So I can't really fault him for that. I think yeah. part of Enzo's strategy is also like gassing other people up to get them really pumped up on the idea of making a big move. Yeah. And like, so that he doesn't have to be the one to make the big move. I mean, we remember during his HOH when there was talk <laughs> about actually, you know, backdooring whoever, you know, and trying to make a big move and all that. Um, I believe it was Danny. I don't remember anymore. But the point is, is that it, he was basically saying like, yes, I'd love to make this move. Let's do it. But why don't we wait till it's someone else's HOH <laughs> yeah. and then we can do it then. And well, I feel like he's doing it with David though. tonight. It's next right, week, yo, next week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the, that's the thing is he, he it, I yeah. feel like he goes to each that's person it. and kind of gets them riled up thinking like, yeah, we should be making big moves. So that way he can be a part of that big move, but mm -hmm. not actually be the person to be making that big move. And that's the problem is he doesn't have, you know, the like gumption or whatever to mm -hmm. actually do something in the game. He's mm -hmm. just kind of all talk. Yeah. And he also hasn't needed to win uh, in some recent weeks. And I, uh, you know, I think a lot of people have been talking about, does he need to win tomorrow night? Will he win tomorrow night? You know, there's not really any need. Uh, if he does, I think I, I don't see him going after David by any means. I think he's going to go after, you know, a bigger name. Uh, it's just, you know, again, does he need to win? Is it much better for his game? If he doesn't, probably. Mm -mm. Mm. All right, let's start to get into talking about Otev, Otev and the big Otev competition from tonight. Because uh, this this freaked me out. I got to be honest. <laughs> this was so weird. Uh, they walk into the backyard 
And Tyler is saying, This is like my dream come true right here. This is my dream come true. Tyler. What is <laughs> what is wrong with Tyler? <laughs> forget know. forget what's wrong with Angela. Look, what's, uh, what's wrong with Tyler? All I have to say is I'm just really glad there wasn't a big creature throwing up on everyone this time. Like, <laughs> right. I mean, that was, like at least we didn't have that. So, like, let's all be oh, thankful man. that it's just like a surfer dude salamander, and instead of like just bodily functions going on. I have mm -hmm. so many questions, Mari. Mari, what is this supposed to be? What, um, is, what is the psychedelic? Uh, salamander the yeah 70s a good woodstock vibe i don't i don't know rob what are we going for here it was weird and those sh the the band names on the shirt i was so confused are those are, the, are, are those, those real be a parody of something yeah, they were all very long and don't very call me a <laughs> because i don't even know what they're talking about <laughs> Well, it honestly, I I think they were very proud of the names they come up with because they made every single person say the name every time every with time. every shirt. And it's just like, okay, we get it. Just like say that they're all right or they're all wrong. Like we don't need to hear every single person say the name. It's not like, I, I just didn't feel the suspense with that one. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and meet our host for OTEV. Are you guys real? <laughs> <Yeah>! <laughs> Are you guys real? <laughs> Wait, what? Okay. So uh, they, they don't yeah. hear that voice in the house, right? It's in do they hear like what they, they hear, hear it not from the guy, they hear it from like the speakers. So it'll play. Oh. It's just not coming directly from the thing's mouth, but uh okay. they do hear everything he has to say. Okay. Okay. Here okay. he is. Let's meet him. Salutations and hello, fellow Earth beings. My name is Otev, the psychedelic salamander. Whoa. I like, no matter how many times they change up Otev, I still picture Otev as the big, like, you know, Legends of the Hidden Temple <laughs> oh, yeah. kind of thing. Oh, like, yeah. That's what I still am picturing because I'm just like, okay, I'm I'm not seeing like the, I'm not remembering the salamander or the yeah. like, you know, next year I'll have forgotten all about this. So, you know. That's fine. I was just about to say Omec. Yeah. From yeah. Yeah. Omec. yeah. Exactly. And I thought this one was interesting. Uh, just like looking at it when we first saw it. I mean, essentially it was like, you know, nobody was able to go out this summer. So nobody had these beach parties, pool parties. So they took all of those leftover, uh, you know, uh, the, the inflatables and all those. And they just threw it into the backyard. They took everybody's from LA, from the local area, <laughs> uh, put it all together. But then the, 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 competition like not having water run down and it was like the the, oh, the uh meat. slippery substance yeah. that they use that was uh, a change up to the format which you know i'm sure we'll get yeah. to led to some uh <laughs> some fun falls yeah. yeah that was uh was different but uh, i and don't think i hated it what did y'all think about the shirts also like being color coordinated so like could you really just uh see <laughs> Could you see what somebody picked, like like the the blue tie dye shirt, and just look for another blue tie dye shirt? I thought that was kind of oh, like that's interesting smart. too. That's what I was looking at the whole time. I was like, oh, if the first person there's two people up have the same color, I'm just gonna start looking for that color. Yeah, yeah, good thinking. Um, let's listen to the explanation of how this is gonna work from our psychedelic salamander. My bodacious bud, Dr. Will, let me crash here at his awesome pad, and I threw a most righteous party last night. Oh, the only bummer is all my bitchin' tie-dye tees went missing. What? And then, then that's how Sweet. we're going to bring Dr. Will into it, that Dr. Will bought the house and then yeah. let the salamander have a, a party? His what tie-dye tees? I believe he said bitchin' tie dye yeah, tees. Yeah. The, the captions did not want to give me the answer on what that was. What the, what the closed captioning say? It didn't say. It skipped over the word. And I <laughs> they was, were just like, that's it. That's it, yo. <laughs> we're walking out on this. So is I, Sal uh, the Salamander is Cato Caitlin then? That's basically <laughs> what we're saying? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't He's, know. Yeah, he took over Dr. Dr. Will is going to be pissed. He doesn't want a <laughs> right. salamander 
having a, a, a taking LSD at his house. Look, uh, Doctor Will has been in worse company in in past years. Uh, I think it's okay. <laughs> He's used to it. He's used oh, to it. Man. Yeah. Oh my god. All I can All say right. is I want one of those shirts. <laughs> I, was, I was like, there's so many of them. I want one. <laughs> yeah. And they, they wore them today. A uh, lot spoiler alert for the feeds. They had them on all day today. And yeah. uh, yeah, spoilers. I, I thought that was uh, <laughs> something fun to watch. <laughs> okay. And they have a Janelle and Bailey one. Oh, I would die. <laughs> so this would be the most popular merch that BB 22 could come up with. Just the shirts from this competition. <laughs> Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sure, yeah. Thousand hey, dollars. It works. There yeah. was a, there was a Big Brother over the top competition that like the best comp they ever did revolved around a shirt. Uh, when they had pr- pretty much like the sequester safety chain, you just hand off a shirt and yes. uh, the crabs. You know, the amazing things you can do with uh, low budget items. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. So there was one contestant that was not going for a low budget item. We heard about (laughs) this all week long that there was $10,000 up for grabs. If somebody got one of the shirts and it looked as though a lot of people had the answer. David found the 10 K shirt and basically said, F it. I'm (laughs) I'm taking the 10 K. Woo. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> yes. And I'm so happy for him. I'm so happy for him. Yeah. Uh, he made everyone mad. Well, what was interesting yeah. about this, though, was that we knew the eventual winner was Cody. Yeah. It's interesting. Cody would have been knocked out here. Yeah. Had mm-hmm. David uh, ended up finding the shirt. But we don't know necessarily if he would have found the shirt ahead of David. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. I mean, look, I, I'm very happy that David has $10,000. Um. But I will say that it is it would be hypocritical of me to say, like, well, I'm so glad David went for the money, like, because, you know, I do think that if you're on the block, like you should be going for the veto. You should right. be wanting to stay. You should care enough that you, you know, no one should he's feel good. safe. Cody told him he's safe. Uh, yeah. I mean, Cody says a lot of things. So <laughs> I, I don't know. I just right. feel like I just feel like. I don't love that he went for the money instead of mm-hmm. trying for the veto. I'm happy that he got mm-hmm. the money and that everyone was upset about it. But like, right. <laughs> I'm not overall condoning the fact that he just said, F it. I'm not going to go for the veto at all. Like who cares? Maybe I'll leave and maybe he will leave. But mm-hmm. you know, I just feel like he should have gone for the veto. He's on the block. He's in danger. Like, I don't know. I think the biggest thing is just the disparity of time. Like it just like if him and Cody were like neck and neck, then it would have been like, oh, okay, it's fine. But the fact that he was like up there Mm -hmm. and Cody was just (laughs) like taking his time, it just made it look a little bit worse. Right. I think it's you know it's different in a competition. Like when they you know when they do the uh, the slip and slide comp and like you can fill up Mm -hmm. the competition to get the power or you can fill it up to get the money. This is like it seemed like there was one shirt that had the ten thousand dollars. Like if you find the golden ticket, you win ten thousand dollars. And yeah, I totally get the mm-hmm. stakes that come along with it. But when you pick it up and you find that shirt and you know that by taking this money, you have $10,000 and all of these other five people will not get it. That is a tough temptation to turn your nose at, especially yeah. when he was slightly feeling safe. So, think, uh, yeah, well, I, I was just gonna say, I think also like, I do think there is a difference between like someone, a, someone who's not on the block and not in danger, like going for it, totally get that. Or like B going for it instead of going for HOH. Like, I just feel Mm. like when you're on the block and you are like a target, possibly like maybe they're saying you're not a target, but you're always a target. I do think that like that's a different scenario than like, you know, the slip and slide or whatever, where it's for HOH and you might not get the power, but you also have chance for veto. You might not go home. Like who knows who's going to win. Then I say like, yeah, go for the money. But I think that in this instance, like I do think that I mean, look, this I just feel like I can't sit there and say like, yeah, I'm glad he took the money since like every time before this, I've said like, hey, if you're in danger, you need to go for it and you need to show that you want to be there. But there is kind of a different scenario here just because like, I mean, David and Kevin, are they going to like win this? I feel like they just don't have a shot at this right. point. Right. So it by is no means was like, it the best move, the game, yeah. right. game move by any means to take if the money. You but... get $0 or you get 10000 like, <laughs> Could, could David know. take the 10 k shirt and like hide it somewhere? Right. I, I don't know how many 10 k shirts there are. Yeah. And then yeah. sort of like, okay, it's me and Kevin at the end. Or I'll take the 10K. Well, that, that might be worse for his game. Yeah. Uh, in that case, like I think it's probably fine the way it played Maybe out. Maybe Enzo. Like, 
Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe there's like a better spot to end yeah. up doing it. But he does. It's either it. committing to taking the money or not committing to taking the money. It's uh, you got to choose. For me in general with Oteb, I if I would love to play Oteb, and I always thought like I would. You saw how at the beginning they were unfurling the shirts. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. first I would always think like I would unfurl the sh shirt. If it's not the shirt I, I'm looking for, I would put it into a, a pile. I think somebody did that in one of the seasons. I can't yeah. remember. Yeah. Who. Yeah. yeah. yeah in the early that, season. Yeah. That's what I would do. I would try and put the stuff that I remember that's like close to somewhere that I know with my own little personal stash. And that's where I would have put that $10,000 shirt. <laughs> but then they kept mm -hmm. dumping the beach balls down. So your stack would have been covered up. You would have to go digging to find it, which is good. Cause hopefully it, it hides it from everybody <laughs> else. Yeah. <laughs> More buried. <laughs> so there was one person that was real hot about David taking the 10 K. I'm just, who is it? Christmas was so mad. Can you imagine? It's Christmas. Who's angry about something? Mm -hmm. see. Yeah. <laughs> and now the irony here is that, you know, had David potentially won the veto, uh, <laughs> she'd be backdoored. Not, she, you know, I, I gave her credit for, before for being, you know, uh, at least mm -hmm. having uh, a little bit of perspective, uh, but not here. Right. So she was mad. mad at him for possibly keeping her off the block she is how oh, dare somebody work. not she's respect the integrity <laughs> of the game when the veto you need to win it if that was me i would be going for the veto you had a chance to play in this competition david and you let yourself be the first one out how dare you <laughs> right doesn't, oh my god doesn't he realize how serious once the psychedelic salamander gives you the <laughs> names you go find that tie-dye t-shirt and you climb up the greasy hill <laughs> this is Ballsy. serious this is Ballsy. serious competition mm -hmm. <laughs> oh boy Ugh, man Christmas. she's mad uh okay so uh kevin gets 10k he's out the shirt says Lady Janelle and the Gentleman Ian's okay. Wait, yeah, like I mean, is that a band? Is that a <laughs> chat, about? Can the chat tell? Uh, I'm I don't recognize the chat any of me... the, the names as being like possible band names. Yeah, I like, didn't like, recognize like, them at all. Brent yeah. is in the chat. He probably knows. <laughs> Zing. Oh, right. I don't, know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I I don't know what any of this is. Yeah, uh, me neither. Then. Uh, yeah, the second one was Kaser Ship Band and uh, Bay uh, Belidoscope. Bel yeah, b uh, b yeah, that was so like everybody reading it out the exact way that it's spelled, which is exactly what I would do, just like yeah. Bailey Doscope or whatever. Yeah. And you're like, <laughs> oh, yeah, Belidoscope, duh. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> I would have yeah. gotten there in like a day or two. Okay. I got none of these references. If they were references, I got none of them. I feel like okay. I know a lot of bands from like the 60s and 70s and like i don't recognize a single <laughs> one of those so just mm -hmm. names, I guess. yeah <laughs> so they really this competition was so long like uh i was it was so like long. we're like 10 minutes into it and i was like oh boy okay I, like uh kevin's still there i guess he got one pretty far i'm like no there's still like five people in the competition uh mm -hmm. but they really tried to play up the rivalry between kevin and and mm -hmm. and cody and mm -hmm. then ultimately uh that it's between the two of them and then it's kevin who gets eliminated first the salamander i thought was very rude to kevin <laughs> kevin that was most heinous get off my ramp yeah, get off my ramp <laughs> get off my ramp get, get, like, out, get the step in get out of here <laughs> <laughs> all right uh then we got down to uh oh this is actually one other thing uh kevin talking about uh i can't stand cody i can't stand that fool <laughs> kevin hates cody i get it he's put him up <laughs> twice right yeah? yeah along with three other people so <laughs> all right um we come down to there's enzo there's cody and there's nicole f uh enzo is up there and cody uh, who, for a guy who wins the competition really was struggling with this matt let me ask you let me put on my uh tie-dye aluminum foil hat and ask <laughs> you was this a throw from nicole franzel 
Oh, yeah. Why did Nicole need to win this veto? We I have just wanted uh, to prove myself to Cody <laughs> to my alliance. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's it's tough actually because like she she, she wanted has no really part of his veto. <laughs> She has been really wanting a win. Uh, she's been looking for one, but then again, once she got to this competition and she like face planted on the wall four times, probably realized it's not happening for her. Uh, totally possible. And the she chat is that all, all in on the yes. Like, I, oh, I can't. <laughs> and then she got pulled up. Is that the same round or? Uh... No, it was no, all. No. It was all the same round. Yeah. yeah. Mari, it, uh, she, this didn't, is... she didn't want this. No, not at all. She was like, she was like, she went down backwards at one point. I was like, what is happening right now? <laughs> Which is crazy because Danny has been saying to her that new school BB, they respect competitions. It's not like us old schoolers. They, res they respect competition wins. We need to get some competition wins under, under our belt. Sadly, that is true with modern Big Brother. There's a, People do value, the jury values competition wins a lot more now than they used to. So, I mean, this was a veto that she could have won, could have gotten it under her belt and did nothing with it. Like it would have costed her nothing to keep those, those noms the same. I don't think Kevin or David were expecting her to change it. I, it would have been a good thing to put on her resume. It would have shut the boys up from saying she hasn't won anything. So I don't know why she, I really feel like she threw this and I don't know why. I think that if she won the veto, there would have been a lot of pressure from Danny to be like, oh, good. Now you have the veto. And now we can back to our Christmas. And now and then she has to not use the veto. And Danny's yeah. like, Nicole, why wouldn't you use the veto? We had it. Why won't you do that? Like, uh, And so it would create a whole big problem for yeah. her with Danny. And we Cody didn't want her to use the veto. Yeah. There's the there's of course the Otev curse which I believe she knew about the Otev curse. Uh, oh, okay. So that's a possibility, and mm -hmm. also I mean she's already sent out two people to the jury that she's probably very concerned about whether or not she has their votes for her to lock in these nominations and have another person gotcha. potentially be mad at her. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, also, could have been a reason not to win this one. Yes. So and that she was on the Amazing Race with Rupert. She knows about what happens when tie dye guys go up and slide down the hill over and over again. She knows oh. that's going to be good TV. So. She's like, this will be good camera time. They'll make a yeah. whole thing. It's so funny. I, I can't imagine she thought about anything else in that competition besides Rupert the entire, <laughs> entire way through. That's right. That's right. Okay. All right. And then, okay, it's Cody versus Enzo, who had nine votes. All of a sudden, Enzo can't remember anything. Mari, did Enzo <laughs> throw this competition? Because he doesn't really want to make a big move either. Um, it's a possibility because as far as I know, Enzo is pretty up to date on what's going on with the game. So him drawing a blank. Yeah. Yeah. This, this could be seen as a throw as well. He had, and he had promised or he had said something to David or Ke Kevin, one of them about changing David. He told David he would change the noms. That's why David picked him of course so mm -hmm. yeah i think he probably threw it as well i don't i but i don't know i hate this like <laughs> i want people to be trying i'm so upset right now but sudden, yeah i don't he probably remember threw anything it. yo yeah everybody plays hard and they want to do well and where was christmas's reactions when uh both nicole and enzo <laughs> ended up not winning where was her uh well, they, they could have had that right yeah when nicole was making grease angels like <laughs> nobody mm -hmm. said anything they gave it a good enough show okay all right uh so that gets it uh really close to uh the end of the episode people are are real mad still though about david about how he has uh no respect for this game and uh, Enzo didn't like it either. I think it's a big piece of doo doo pie that he did that. <laughs> big piece of doo doo, doo, -doo pie. pie. Uh, mm -hmm. didn't he say also the other night he that Mem leave. there's something else about doo doo that uh, that uh, he thought that Memphis and Christmas were also full of doo 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 heads or something? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, why this all of a sudden is and is everything doo doo, -doo for, and for Enzo? Does he, he have Dave's small children? Does he have small children? He has to revert to uh, yeah, it's a yeah. parent talk, so he's not cursing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know where this all came from all of a sudden for uh, for Enzo. Uh, anyway, so 
uh, we're going to get to Cody and Cody's going to tell uh, uh, David, Melissa, like, uh, why'd you say, why, oh, why, oh, that uh, I told you not to look like you were safe. <laughs> like, Whoops. Never tell people. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it does, it does make it look like David has come to some sort of agreement with Cody that, you know, he doesn't need to use the veto or even get the veto at all. Like it, it just makes David look too comfortable. The mm -hmm. fact that he went first for the money. And they're all yeah. just so annoyed because he's not the one that's going or he wasn't the one scheduled to be going, uh, you know, at this point <laughs> in the week, maybe he is, maybe he's not right now, but uh, it's like, we get it, but they're extra annoyed that now he has $10,000 in his pocket. And also, you know, <laughs> do they right. actually want to switch on what they were thinking of the original plans? Who knows? I mean, honestly, if I was thinking like, you know, okay, this guy's not going home. Like this is the target. And then the guy who's not going home decides like, eh, I'm just going to go for the money. I'm fine. Like I'd be kind of like, well, maybe we should send you home. Like if <laughs> you feel that comfortable, clearly maybe, I mean, David shouldn't feel that comfortable, but the thought behind it would be like, okay, well, maybe he has side deals with people that I don't know about. Like if he's feeling that safe on a week that he could go home, like mm -hmm. something's not adding up here. So I just didn't like that. Christmas was the one kind of leading the charge and she's sitting there with $5,000 in her pocket for the first <laughs> week. Like what, mm -hmm. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Although she just got it for nothing. Right. Yeah, she's like, open that envelope. Yeah. Yeah. The, Everybody the forgot envelope. about that. Um, <laughs> all right. So power veto meeting, uh, it's not going to get used. Um, did we even see the speeches? Is this optional now? No that, uh, yeah. yeah it's only yada, 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 yada. Matt, has the power veto been used exactly once this season when Davon was on the block? Um, and Kevin. Or, 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 yeah. When, uh, Kevin did like, take himself down once. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Kevin, Kevin, who Kevin, yeah, Kevin, Kevin, Davon yeah. is on Kevin. Yeah. Okay. So it's been a, wow. a, a very boring season for wow. the power of veto. Yeah. Too many people yeah. are playing the power veto. Yeah. Um, one of my I favorite really, ideas from this week of uh, give it down to th three or four people play the power veto. They're stealing triple evictions from BB uh, Ken. They should also steal the idea where the HOH doesn't play in the veto. I've been an advocate for this since BB Ken introduced it, and especially like just as time goes on, and we still haven't seen that change on BB US. Like you already gave this person the HOH power for the week. You know, they have the power to do the moves that they want to do by taking them out of the veto competition. I really feel like that's something that BB can got right. Um, and mm. granted we haven't seen it like enough to like fully uh, come down on either way on that. But I feel like we were heading in the right direction and mm. uh, then we wouldn't end up with the Cody back-to-back -back wins or the Memphis back-to-back -back wins. It's a lot more open. Yeah, to be okay. fair, it does seem like a lot of the time, like even the majority of the time, maybe it seems like the HOH wins both. Mm. I just feel like it's like constantly, we're always seeing the HOH, like make the noms, then have absolutely no drama because they keep the noms the same. And it's just like, you know, it, if Cody's I, I not there of, in this comp, yeah. Enzo wins the veto and maybe he uses it. Like maybe he well, actually uses it. I don't know. Well, right. not, I get carried away. Yeah. I mean, I'm just yeah. saying the option would be there if Cody is not playing. That's true. Originally when they introduced that on BB can, I didn't like that. Um, Especially with the mechanism that I was being used that season, where it's like, oh, uh, the first season with BB Can 7, it was like, oh, the HOH isn't in the veto, so they're not winning as much, so it's not putting a target on their back. And it was letting, it was letting big competition threat people slide because people weren't registering that they're big competition because they weren't, you know, doing double wins. But now that BBUS has moved towards the whole big group, get the group where everybody wins the competitions and we can, you know, steamroll from there. This would be, like you said, Matt, this would be the perfect time to introduce not having the HOH play the veto because then there is a bigger chance that the minority, the minority house guests might be able to, um, like, the people in the minority, not just the minority. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, we'll get sometimes it's the same difference. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they'll get a chance at the veto. So I, I, I didn't think about that until you brought that up, Matt. I think that's a great, that would be like a really good um, yeah. thing to implement for U.S. Especially, Big Brother. Yeah, especially because it doesn't seem like U.S. players care anymore about big competition threats. They're like, exactly. oh, that's great. Let's keep them in. Exactly. Exactly. What they should have done <laughs> is started this twist on Christmas's HOH week mm -hmm. and said from this point on in yeah. the game, the HOH is from not going to be in the veto. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's wow. your Melka. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. uh, let's take some questions from our listeners tonight about everything that's going on. And uh, let's uh, go to Kelly Lynch, who's here. Hi, Kelly. How many house guests do you think knew the Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club band reference? Okay. Uh, how many house guests do you think uh, know the Beatles? See, <laughs> I know that album, but which t shirt yeah, was, was that? The that was in the example. That was key. That was the uh, Keisha and uh, Keisha Nana. Uh, no, sorry. It was uh, so sorry, Sergeant Keisha's Lonely Ian Hearts Band. Which is terrible. It doesn't even so like it doesn't, it's just supplementing those. And I love words wordplay. And, and words. Look, garbage. We got half the crew working from home. All right. We gotta, we gotta give <laughs> them a little bit of grace here. Yeah. Oh boy. Bro. Bro. I, uh, I mean, maybe, look, I don't even think you need to know, you know, yeah. the Beatles to understand <laughs> any of these references. Cause like I knew the Beatles and Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club band, and I was just like yeah. speaking of terrible wordplay. But I did save my new friend Mulan. Mulan cow, come on. Hello, Pablo number three, right? Are we on Pablo three at this point? Okay. Okay, Tyler. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. From Socialist Revolution has been following the podcast. Uh, no <laughs> one has mentioned going after David after this eviction. Could David make it past the triple eviction and end up coasting to the final two? Uh, boy. Oof. It, I'd love to see it. I'll give it's you a that. Big You'd love to see it. Yeah. It's a big yeah. possibility. Because I think Tyler wants to keep David in there as long as possible. Mm -hmm. If Tyler wants to keep uh, Christmas and David in there as long as possible, once you get yeah. to the final four, the final three, anything can happen. I mean, he would need to win, of course. But, I mean, it's any given Sunday after that. So, yeah. <laughs> Hear me out, though. Okay. The best part of David getting to the final two, bitter jury, and winning will be when Melissa has to apologize to David for her infamous letter God. where she apologized to everybody saying that David was a good player. And yeah, he's a bad I'm going to have an another note <laughs> and then when he uh, wins, coming. No Melissa will have to apologize again <laughs> that, yeah, that but David was a bad player. Yeah, if David, isn't, am I correct, Melissa, that if David's the next one out after Kevin, don't you get $100 coming your way? I do. Can you so, explain that? No, so what, what was it? You, the, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's another thing to look forward to this season is Taryn paying me. So uh, what, just what was the bet? Well, I just said, here's the order that uh, the people are going to go out. And you can catch, see it on my Twitter. Uh, I retweeted a video of it. But basically, I told Taryn, I said, look, or Ambrent, I said, that what's to stop this from happening? Like, that the order of people leaving is going to be, and I just listed out literally everyone who's left. You, so far. Wait, did you have a boot list for the season? You had spoilers. <laughs> I apparently I did because yeah. I yeah. was like almost spot on. Um, there were a few like miss like misplacements of people, but they all have mm -hmm. left. Um, the last two remaining to be uh, Kevin and David, and Kevin is well, at least one of them is going out the door. Um, and I know I've got the the music, uh, <laughs> the ability. Uh, so yeah, I I predicted it, and Taryn was like, "That's not happening." He's like, "I, I will <laughs> bet money that that is not going to happen." And I was like, "Why?" Really? And he, we are one eviction away from that coming true. We are literally one eviction away. And uh, the one thing wow. that might throw a wrench in the plan really is that it's a triple eviction. So mm -hmm. it could really so just it change it up. David goes out at the second or the last part of the triple eviction. You don't get money. I, I, yeah. well, I guess it depends if it's, if it's a big brother Canada style where they go out at the same okay. time, then I would still get it. I say, mm -hmm. but, but what if Julie says the other person's name first? Oh, that's a tough one. I guess maybe he <laughs> walks out of the house first. <laughs> okay. Maybe we'll so go you need by that. Okay. Uh, David I, I need to go out Kevin first. and David to go out this uh the, tomorrow and then yeah. i get money so okay did didn't hey, somebody uh, Karen, get your wallet <laughs> out 
<laughs> Didn't they already confirm it's going to be like a double double instead of a regular BB can trip? I don't know. Did, did somebody you see that confirmmed I somewhere? I don't know. Yeah, I didn't see any confirm like confirmation, but it's I possible. Thought... Melissa, okay. wait. Sorry. Final question. What, what would you do if he somehow finds a way to give you a hundred dollars from his stock watch bank and put it into your wallet? And that's what he was talking about the whole time. Would you accept oh. that? Oh. That is semantics, and I will yeah. not accept it. <laughs> not at all. I will Get not. I will go, like, play the tape. Uh, he never said stock watch money. And every <laughs> time we talk about stock watch, he's like, he clarifies, this is not real money. This is not <laughs> anything yeah. important. Blah, blah, blah. Legally, so, he has to say that. Uh, legally, legally. Yeah. 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 That. That's the disclaimer for stock watch. Sean Little says, uh, Nicole definitely threw that right and is just continuing to lie in the diary room. I think that this was a definite throw uh, from Nicole. Yeah. It, yeah, it just looks so bad. Like, like Rob said, she was literally at the top there. It, yeah, and then she was just like rolling around and laughing. So I, I don't know. It looked like a mm -hmm. throw to me. Yeah. Personally. Why? Okay. I think it was a throw. All and right. and we've seen that Nicole has lied to us in the diary room multiple times this season. So I don't trust. Well, I hate she lying. Says. <laughs> yeah, it's lying. Okay. <laughs> Um, Kobe Valentine says, how long has, was Nicole struggling to get up the ramp while Cody was searching just as long as, uh, it needed for Cody to find the right t-shirt. <laughs> right. It was a miracle that she was able to, able to finally do it. Every other round she was able to get up. Every other round that right. Kevin was in there, no problem getting up there. But then when Cody would have been eliminated from the veto, like, oh, I can't do it anymore. Okay. Oh, no. uh, Paul Wright wants to say, tomorrow we'll be down to six with 27 to go. Normally this happens with 20 days left. So battle back mm. or no? Seems like mm. that they want to load up the jury to bring one back and otherwise doesn't make uh, uh, COVID sense COVID. to have so many comps tomorrow. So let's uh, just uh, talk this through one more time. Is it possible that we're doing a triple eviction, but we'll bring somebody back? I don't see it, right? Like, then you'd have to do it, I guess, the, the latest would be next Thursday that they would have to have this battle back competition. Mm. Uh, I think, you know, the COVID concern would be traveling these people in and out from, like, a place where they were contained to a place mm -hmm. where, I mean, they might mm -hmm. be going to a jury house where they are as well, but still, you're probably, you know, they're, they're being exposed to people. I think just with the details of it all, it doesn't make sense uh, for them to do that. Yeah. And, sorry, sorry, I just had a question. Do they show the goodbye messages when there's a battle back for the jury? I we'd have to go back. Question. Too, but we'll, we'll, now I'm like doubting everything now that you mentioned yeah. it. We'd have to go back and look and see when Scotty got knocked Scotty, out in Big Brother 20 <laughs> and to see the, the last time that we I could don't. see that. Um, but yeah, three people are uh, going out tomorrow. I guess we'll see ultimately if they do anything. And they could also, the other opportunity is they could do some sort of like a reset week uh, a la, like they'd love to copy things from Big Brother 16. Uh, they, they, could Big do, Brother 16. they could do a week where nobody goes home oh, for some the reason. Reset. Okay. Tyler yeah. versus David on the block. They decide they want to send Tyler home for once and for all. And, uh, <laughs> production. Like, no, no, no. Guys. <laughs> mm -hmm. Tyler, yeah. you will not leave this house under our <laughs> watch no way tyler's mm -hmm. like no i just want to go okay. <laughs> right. another question uh this is from noah so tyler got to play in the veto and voice otev production <laughs> favorite with the host of the competition Let right there all right uh was this was this tyler hosting the veto Salutations, hello, <laughs> fellow Earth beings. It's My him. name it's is him. Otep, uh, a psychedelic salamander. Speaking of psychedelic, I, I thought that I had taken acid and I'm watching this episode when they did those wacky transitions in between. I love the. Those. That, that was, was weird. So no, weird. it's like it's, like, it's wild. popping those old like like uh what like laughing or whatever those like old Austin Powers. Where they're like yeah. you know they got the dance little breaks in between. <laughs> Right. <laughs> I loved it. I was that like, was okay, crazy. I this. <laughs> Freaking me out. Like the closest okay. they're gonna get to like cast pictures for this season, uh, like backyard <laughs> pictures. If they like screenshot them in the uh, in the inner tubes and whatnot. Just mm -hmm. like, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, this is from Tara Renee. The great Tara Renee. Uh, is Christmas getting a good edit? I was sad that we didn't get to see more more angry Christmas. 
Uh, mm -hmm. you, you, you were shocked. I'm just flabbergasted. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Is Christmas getting a good edit, Mari? Uh, not for my eyes. I'm sorry. Spoiler alert. I don't like Christmas. So <laughs> I don't know if y'all could tell from this whole, <laughs> this whole podcast. I don't think she's getting a good edit. I think she's just getting an edit where they're trying to make something happen. So, <laughs> so they're trying to show some sort of friction. So I, that's all I see. Yeah. I don't see any good in it, but that could just be me. I will say that I did I did think that I think it was last episode was pretty good for her where it was like it seemed like she was the one person like figuring things out and really like just like for whatever reason being able to tell like exactly the pieces on the game board or whatever probably just like editing that way but it did make her seem like okay Christmas has got this figured out like she's gonna do something about this and now this week it's like oh wow she's figured out they want to backdoor her like she's figuring out how to get around it and she's saving herself or whatever and I think that I think it so I think it does give her a good like strategic edit mm -hmm. um I do think they're letting her you know become like angry Christmas or whatever and kind of like showing that side of her. But I also think they are giving her a good edit in terms of like the strategy and, you know, yeah. intelligence or whatever. So I think we have to look to the Zingbot to think about like what, what is production trying to do with Christmas? And if you go back to the Zingbot Zing, it was like, uh, what's the difference between Christmas and the holiday season? One is cold. Um, annoying and stressful yeah. and the other is the holiday season mm -hmm. so i do think that they uh, are not giving her a good edit if we're gonna <laughs> like uh, ultimately weigh it out because i think they yeah. are trying to go for like a kind of hothead that's gonna go off at any moment mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. Yeah. For sure. Emotional. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and I mean, as far as it goes with like figuring out the game board, like what is there to figure out? You're you are the you, you're in the game board. You're okay. with all of the uh, main <laughs> alliance. I mean, yeah, right. I don't know what else there is to figure out. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, this is from uh, Otev. Uh, will we see Doctor Will during the triple eviction? No. Hashtag. Where's Will though? <laughs> uh, so uh, Melissa, that um, from you know this clue that they got that right. at least there's going to be one more dr will uh, video that gets played right yeah yeah i mean i do think that there will be that that video giving them a clue maybe there will be a video of him saying like i, I warned you guys or whatever right before the triple eviction but you know nothing nothing substantial at this point unfortunately um mm -hmm. i kind of was hoping for i was hoping that it might have been a situation where uh, you know, I knew that the first segment was pre-taped, obviously, mm -hmm. but I was kind of hoping that maybe if they were going to really play it off, like, oh, this is the neighbor's house, they could have Will far enough away from the house guests, but still like be able to talk to them during like a either hosting a competition or whatever and kind like of the like people that yell over the wall. Yeah. yeah like a wall <laughs> yeller essentially. Um, you know, and so I kind of was hoping that he'd be able to give them like a piece of his mind or maybe a piece of the audience's mind mm -hmm. or just kind of like say something. Cause he, you know, has a lot to say over Twitter and Instagram and all that. So it would have been nice to kind of see that. And it doesn't really seem like we're going to get it. He'll see yeah. them at the zoom round table. Zoom yeah, round table. Exactly. Matt, but this was so stupid the way that they handled all this with Dr. Will because that they teased, hey, we've got a big surprise coming. Mm -hmm. uh, but they didn't say who it was. Uh, mm -hmm. And so people probably were like, okay, well, whatever. And then you had Dr. Will, but they didn't promote that they had Dr. Will. So they didn't really even maximize that they had him. That they could have just told the audience, like on, on on Thursday night, tune in to see Doctor Will. Like people will be like, "Oh my god!" Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody go like when you when we're done here, call a casual uh, that you know. Find out if they even remember that there was a Big Brother legend in the house this week. Uh, <laughs> if they can the get house. the name bonus points if they can describe anything uh, that happened with this person uh even more bonus points but I, I feel like it's unlikely that uh that that's gonna leave any lasting impressions i think we'll be lucky if we remember next season uh that dr will was a part of this season in, in <laughs> any way other than his usual spot there at the end okay all it's, my casual uh, friends stop watching so <laughs> yeah they won't, even watch, <laughs> they won't even watch so they can watch me on this podcast so oh no <laughs> Well, could they just listen to the podcast? That's what I said. Yeah. <laughs> That's how little they care. 
<laughs> all right uh let's do from patricia please explain why all the guys except for tyler want nicole f to stay is it because they think they can beat her since she has won before because she gives into every plan that they have every time that they want to do something and mm -hmm. uh, you know it's uh, another one of nicole's people or her friends and they're like she's like okay i don't think that's a good idea that's not what i want but okay if you say mm -hmm. so yeah yeah okay uh, this is from Mike Edwards. Uh, does the chip really have to still say Nicole F? Yeah, look, they're not going to make more. Make right. <laughs> That's it. That's it, yo. You think they care enough to make another one? No. I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay. Uh, let's see. We got uh, here's uh, Bill and Ted. Otep was throwing out terms like bogus and most righteous during the veto. Are the BB producers big fans of Bill and Ted? Uh, Bill and Ted did come back uh, this yeah, season. Maybe uh, cross yeah, Bill, Bill and Ted are the uh, Janelle and Caser of uh, cinema. <laughs> yeah. They yeah. came back after a long layoff. And we don't we don't get any more cross promotions on Big Brother like we used to, man. Going back and watching the old seasons and seeing all the old movies that they watch is oh my God. still hilarious. And they're always mm -hmm. bad movies too. Yeah. <laughs> they always have to find nice things to say about it. They're like, oh, I love the costumes. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, when they said the commercials. Yeah. Um so all right. Uh should we talk about spoilers? Yep. Is there yep. Uh, are there spoilers to talk about? Oh, should we, Mari? I want to dance to the spoilers. <laughs> all right, all right. So, <laughs> She's like, I don't want to talk about spoilers. I just want to dance. <laughs> all right, let's. Uh, so tomorrow night, don't forget, two hour Big Brother tomorrow night uh, at a special time. We will be live at ten fifteen p.m. Eastern time to talk about two hours triple eviction live. We got a jam packed Ooh. panel. We'll break it all down right after the episode. I my, I predict will be the biggest live audience we've ever had for an episode of Rob's podcast tomorrow night, live 10, 15 PM Eastern time. But until then, let's talk about our spoilers. The office of civil defense has issued the following message. This is a spoiler. Doctor Who has more money than any of you. Has been detected and the protective action. Doctor Who did it. Okay. All right. I think it's so funny that everyone is convinced that that spoiler voice is me. And to me, it sounds mm -hmm. literally nothing like me. Should we listen to it again? Let's see. People think. All right. Let's dance people again. Think this, people think this is Melissa. Let's listen to it. Pleasure to hear Melissa. The Office of Civil Defense has issued the following message. This is a spoiler warning. A oh. spoiler warning means that an actual spoiler against this spoiler. has been detected, and that protective action should be taken. Yeah, I could hear Spoiler. it, but uh, th it's that, robotic. That song, yeah, it's not Taryn either. Uh, that that song predates uh, Melissa being but, on Rob as a podcast. <laughs> I remember, yeah, I remember when I first started, and I was so excited to do the spoiler dance. I was like, mm -hmm. okay, we're dancing. <laughs> I mean, it could have been re-recorded once she uh, yeah, she joined cool. the team. Uh, but a kudos spoiler. to uh, uh, Ryan Elder, who was the composer of the it's spoiler so song. Yeah, it's so very good. Yeah. Still work. Okay, all right, so. Uh, what's the latest? Kevin's still going home. I'm going to lose my first draft pick uh, from the draft. Uh, I took Kevin at number, number three overall. Wow. Mm -hmm. Oh, yikes. Yeah, he's lasted a while. <laughs> what's going on? At, yeah, Kevin's going home. Uh, you know, not much has changed on that front. Um, since, I guess, the last episode, we've had the situation where all of the house guests are aware that there's something funky going on this week. That uh, multiple house guests might be e exiting at one point or another. They don't know the exact details of it. They right. thought there was going to be an eviction last night. Of course, there wasn't. They mm -hmm. might still think there's going to be one tonight. They're like terrified that Julie's going to pop on the screen at any moment. But uh, yeah. not the case. It's obviously tomorrow. They're going to have a couple of extra people go, but they're not going to be too surprised about it. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Dr. Wills said oh uh, we got to get a few of you out of here everybody got scared so they're now planning ahead and from what taryn said this morning it looks like tyler may be in a little bit of trouble from what i understand go on, <laughs> go on. <laughs> go on. Yes. Um, well it, it looks like enzo so cody cody was talking to enzo and they were talking about um the double and and maybe whatever they think after that and they were essentially they were initially thinking about maybe 
uh, having the other side target Memphis. But when he spoke to Memphis and Memphis was like, he really wants to get out David and Danny, then they said, oh, well, maybe we should not let them target Memphis. Maybe we should point them towards Tyler. And um, even Enzo was talking about how he was okay with Tyler going um, yesterday, I think. It was, yeah, yesterday. So um, Taryn and Maggie were talking about it this morning that it seems like Tyler might be in a little bit of hot water so far, and he doesn't know it. Oh, my God. You would hate to see it. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I hate to see it. And yeah. Danny as well, right, Melissa? Danny might yeah. know that she's in hot water as oh, well. Yeah. yeah, but Danny is definitely in hot water. I mean, honestly, if I have to predict right now who I think goes home in the triple, I would say, I I mean, we know Kevin's going, uh, or at least, I mean, that at this yeah. point. Kevin is now part one. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And then I think Danny goes, and I think, I, I, I kind of feel like I've, could see Christmas going just cause, but I think, I think we have to go with Taryn's, you know, spreadsheet of things. Cause in, in my mind, I am not quite at that level where I'm like, okay, if this person wins H2H, then these people will be the people on the block. I'm kind of just like, okay, who is like more likely to go home than other people? Yeah. So and I, you can listen to the LFC round table yes, for the full, the full breakdown of that. <laughs> the full breakdown of percentages and everything. Yeah. Very detailed. But let's um, hear, let's yeah. hear some predictions. Let's hear uh, two, two names. I think first name, second name, Danny, for sure. Yeah. I want to say Christmas, but I could absolutely see Christmas, uh, like winning a veto or winning something. Um, maybe Tyler. Mm, oh, this yeah. is hard. It's, it's like, hard. I can, I can pick mm -hmm. the Danny one right away. I, I mean, I could also see David going just cause yeah. like, it's an easy thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll go it, I don't know. Danny Memphis. Maybe it's wishful thinking. I'm sure it is. But there are people that have had his name around, you know, floating around. Enzo, uh, he might have come around a little bit, Enzo, on his first uh, plan of wanting Memphis gone. But Tyler, we know, and Memphis have never been best friends. Uh, they had that issue with, like, Tyler winning the veto on Memphis's week. Tyler, weeks back, was talking about how Memphis isn't, like, his favorite person in the game. Uh, and Nicole talked about, you know, taking en uh, Memphis out. Danny might not be against it. So I don't know. I don't know that it's, you know, at the top of the list uh, of guarantees, but I'm going to put that energy out there memphis going going home okay <laughs> yeah i i think i agree with melissa definitely danny but i think i think it will be david as well because i think what might happen is they may aim for tyler but i mean what is that four competitions if 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 we think it's going to be the whole kevin goes hoh veto one person goes and then HOH veto, one person goes. Right. That, that's four competitions that Tyler has to like not win one would, of yeah. them. <laughs> that seems like that doesn't, I don't think that's going to happen. So I think they might, and even if they swing at Tyler, I think they might miss. So I think David might end up going as like, like we said, an easy option. I think it'll be the yeah. Danny is the big move for this for like a double. They'll think Danny's the big move, and then it's like if they if they oh it's a triple now, then they'll be like okay, well David. So okay, I'll just put a wrinkle on it. I'll say David Danny, and that uh, Danny ends up maybe winning the veto in the first part. Uh, get a little intrigue of can she survive <laughs> the night after she ends up on the block? She realizes what's up, but maybe uh, can't uh, get so lucky in the second vote. So maybe uh, what if David goes first in yeah. the triple eviction? Yeah. Okay. The two hours uh, of trying to get out Danny. That'll be the storyline of the night. <laughs> oh, okay, look, Ooh, can they do can it? They do it? Can, yeah. can they do it? And then it'll be over. Uh, then we'll see. And we'll go on to something else then after yeah. that. All right. Yeah. Um, Mari, you said there was something else that you wanted to uh, potentially t talk about earlier in the show about Kevin. <laughs> yeah, I'm like looking at my notes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let me take another question. Uh, this is uh, from Abby with Kevin. Uh, will Kevin carry the blanket out with him? Uh, and will he try to get them to use the blanket as his face mask? Does Kevin have a whoopee? <laughs> I just kind of walks it. around the blanket, He's just living his life, and people like to talk about his blanket a lot. Mm -hmm. It's probably chilly in there. That would probably be me. Yeah, I, yeah, I probably, probably would. Yeah, I, I'd be snuggled up. I mean, it. his yeah. blanket, no, it cannot be used as a mask. Uh, the mask is, has still got to go on. And, uh, 
I don't think Julie's going to take a blanket in, instead, but I'm sure he'll, uh, you know, get gifted it in the box that gets sent back to his house in a couple months. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, spoilers. There's no spoilers. I mean, it, they haven't really done anything. Slowly. Yeah, I mean, minus fi- finding out that there might be multiple people going and the little scramble fest. I um, I think they were saying I like how um, uh, Danny went up to David and and was like, was it Danny went up to David and was like, oh, I'm sorry, I had to put you on the block or whatever. Like, mm-hmm. you know, we're cool now. And David's like, yeah, sure. Her mm-hmm. awkward her awkward conversation with Tyler. Like, Danny is just scrambling right now, and it's just. It's just really sad to look at. It's, mm-hmm. it's not going very well. But she does know, at least she does feel that she is going a little bit. She she does, well, not going. She feels the pressure. She feels like nobody's talking to her. She's realizing that, like, um, that maybe she had voted out all the wrong people. So she is trying maybe. to do something. But what she's trying to do is kind of just awkward. Yeah. Now, I know it's been talked about a lot, Melissa. I know you were worked up last night about the uh, did production ruin uh, this that uh, the triple eviction. But I, I don't know how they're going to necessarily structure this to our episode. But it is very possible that we end up getting a you know uh, you know twenty minutes or so of the house guests reacting to this triple eviction news, and that we end up getting like a you know a bunch of story segments that happen before uh, as opposed to like right. where there are things that happen and we just like uh miss all of it like mm-hmm. I, it, it may be part of the episode tomorrow night yeah yeah i mean i all was scrambling. i was worked up about it at the opening of the round table but i do feel like taryn made some good points about it and kind of like talked me off the ledge on that one just because like i was really upset because i was thinking you know i love i i love the seeing the reaction on the night and having people you know make moves that maybe they wouldn't have made otherwise because now all of a sudden it's a triple eviction. They didn't think about this, but Taryn did make a good point that, you know, when was he the last time you used- he always does, doesn't he? It's sickening. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but like, it's like, when was the last time you saw someone actually make a shocking move that they didn't already think in their head on one of these nights? And and even so, if they have made a shocking move, when was that shocking move selling good? You know what I mean? Like you said, <laughs> people are more likely to use take the safe route if they don't have time to plan. So I do no. think that yeah. like with them kind of planning it out, maybe we have the option to see something more exciting than if like all of a sudden it's sprung on them and they're like, uh, I guess David, you know, so that's <laughs> the hope. So I, I'm okay about it. I, I obviously do think that like in terms of, television drama they i mean for production's sake they probably shouldn't have told them so that way they could get the shocked faces and get the reactions they're looking for but you know whatever we have we have some amazing actors on this cast and they're going to do a great job of faking the surprise so mm-hmm. you know that's okay fine. all right anything else uh heading into the triple eviction I'm just right. excited to see it. I, yeah, yeah. I to see yeah, I'm ready for it. it. Yeah. Been ready uh, yeah. when they announced it. Get like, your popcorn go, out. Do this. Yeah. I feel like normally when I go into a double eviction um, or even a triple in Big Brother Canada, I'm always like so nervous because I'm like, there are certain people that I don't right. want to go, and there are certain outcomes I don't want to see. In this situation, like, I'm <laughs> honestly okay with matter. anything. Yeah, like so Take I'm going in. Whatever you want. Calm, cool, and collected. Just excited yeah. to see some something crazy. You How know, about this? So we'll well, so what's the worst case scenario tomorrow night? None. There's no, I none. Mean, I really don't have a worst case scenario. Okay. I I just feel like anyone could go, and I'm fine with it. And like that's great. So I, I feel I feel much better going into this triple eviction. There's no you know nerves. There's no uh, worriedness. Like I just feel like I'm just going in there, just like yeah, it's gonna be yeah. fun. Television. Whatever happens, happens. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, nice. obviously, obviously, worst case scenario would be person wins HOH and then wins veto and everything stays the same. And then that person goes home, then person wins HOH and that person wins veto. It, sure. or, and there's no like boring. drama. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. actually, you know what? I do have a worst case scenario. Worst case scenario is if it's a triple like the way Big Brother Canada does it. Mm-hmm. I think that would be worst case scenario. I really hope yeah. they do a double and then a double um, instead of the triple like Big Brother Canada, because that is... Well, I don't know how they'd fill all and the time you, if we did it you know uh, Canada right. way. Maybe My that's small, why they're creating a segment 
uh, mm-hmm. and them finding out and you're going to have just like a normal episode and then Maybe. all of a sudden at the end. Small technical reason as to why, why it may be the way that we want it to be and not the BB Can way. They do have two chairs. It's not one of those couches that the nominees sit on. Mm-hmm. I don't know where the third nominee would sit if they had to have three nominees sitting there together. That's and unless true. they're going to insert a chair in the middle of the day, maybe yeah. maybe it has to be the two. Mm-hmm. Mario, I heard maybe. you ask, what's the best case scenario? Best case oh, what, scenario? I, I don't know. What 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 do you think that I I, I know that the Taryn said that it's almost uh, mathematically impossible for Cody to go out. Right. Well, I mean, that would be the most shocking thing to me. The most shocking thing to me would be watching Cody walk out mm-hmm. the door. The best case scenario for me personally would be Christmas in Memphis. But yeah. I mean, would that. <laughs> <laughs> would that change the dynamics in the house of Christmas in Memphis? Uh, or would it just be then, uh, would, would Tyler and Enzo and Cody, uh, be sort of like the, and Christmas be then the dominant force in the house or then Cody and Christmas aren't really on the same page. Cody and Nicole and Danny. Cause if, if Memphis say, if Nicole, oh, sorry, if Christ- Kevin, sorry, Christmas in Memphis is gone. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if Kevin Christmas and Memphis are gone, then we have Cody, Enzo, Tyler, David, David. Nicole, Danny. Now that could get really interesting. Okay. I think that if, yeah, I think that if uh, Cody and Memphis leave, I do think that that kind of opens up the game board a little bit. M- although maybe, because I do feel like, you know, Cody, Cody's got his connections, but if you take him out of that, then those connections, like who do they go to? Same yeah. with Memphis. Like Memphis has connections. Um, but if you take Memphis out, where does, where do they go to? So it would be, the most interesting thing to happen to have both those two guys go. Right. Who's Just, gunning for Memphis? If, if David wins HOH, David, Nicole, potentially yes. D- okay. Danny, maybe Danny does want Christmas out, but like Memphis and, and Christmas would be like the ideal nominations to ensure it, that Christmas tri- maybe right. goes. Uh, and then Tyler, sm- maybe a slim possibility that Memphis ends up on the block. I mean, he is going for Danny and Nicole, so unlikely, but I still, you know, I'm not ca- counting it out completely. Uh, the, the To me, it's uh, th- those four names that we talked about at the beginning of this podcast. Get yeah. one of those out, and I think the game opens up a little bit. But until one of those four guys are out, I feel like we're kind of stuck in the same loop they're all just clinging so tight to each other and they won't let go okay yeah all right we'll see you on thursday i do have one more question yes what competitions do you think we'll see we 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 normally always get like a clown shoe moment I was about to say clown mm-hmm. shoe. <laughs> yeah yeah well um, it will be hard in terms of like the covid situation of yeah. like will the, like i feel like that definitely questions will be questions. will yeah. be part of it and will we yeah, see sort of like the backyard partitioned where we have like Will, will we have like maybe like one sort of theme in the backyard and then like one area for one comp with like a question area and then another thing that yeah. was is already set up? Yeah, I can't remember the exact competition that this was for. It was in Celebrity Big Brother, uh, the second one with Lolo and, and Tamar and all them. Uh, I feel like there was a competition set that they used twice in the same night. I don't remember the details of what it was for, mm. but they used it and then they used it again. You know what it was? It was the fact that they had a... um. They, they threw in like a safety thing. Like you could win safety for the round and then Tamar won oh. that. And then we still had another competition. And they used the same booths. I feel like we're going to get something like that. Mm-hmm. Where yeah. It's just, you can use the same setup and just do something different in, in the right. same spot. It, you know, they, yeah. can, they can make it happen. It was something with them hanging. Was there like a hanging on to the Oscar one? And then that, it was also, I think that was early in the game. That was really early. Yeah. 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 But I mean, in opening night, we had the table makers and the the little running thing all in the same backyard spot. So, yeah, I mean, they'll figure it out, I guess. So Um, let's talk about what's coming up. Hey, look, it's a it's a it's a purple pants podcast (laughs) is back. Uh, uh, check out what Bryce has to say on the latest edition advice with Bryce. Bryce is uh, watching a uh, Paris Hilton documentary. Hear what Bryce has going on over on the Purple Pants podcast. News AF uh, back again with Tyson and Danny talking about influencers uh, taking pictures in fake private jets. Mm-hmm. Check that out and uh, much more on the latest News AF. Okay, and then over on our 90-day fiancé, Rahap, check out what Puya has going on here on 
happily ever after the latest uh, bunch of cast of characters from the world of 90 day fiance uh mara you've been on the 90 day fiance yes. wrap up recently yes i had such a great time with puya i'm still behind on the finale i have to watch that in the tell all so i'm excited to hear what he has to say i'm about to be on that one uh next week oh okay. nice that's the plan so yeah for one of the uh reunion ones i'm gonna do mm -hmm. one of those so. the messy okay. messy. Yeah, messy all right <laughs> well, Kuya is a busy guy because he's also going to be on the love island recap of season two week six part two is this the is he going to recap the finale yeah, that's what it so. looks like. Yeah. Boom. Bringing out nice. the, the big guns, Lucky. the heavy hitters to talk about the finale of Love Island with it's the finale with Scally and Kirsten. <laughs> check it out on our Love Island wrap up feed. Uh, of course, uh, check out the LFC roundtable. Of course, uh, Taryn, Brent, and Melissa got back together and uh, talked about it all last night. Still a great <laughs> listen. Check that yep. out on the LFC roundtable. And then uh, check out Taryn's live feed update. He's getting you ready for the triple eviction tomorrow morning. Uh, last chance to hear the table set for Thursday night's triple eviction tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. Eastern. And then uh, Kevin <laughs> has a surprise face. Uh-oh. <laughs> yep. Uh, the triple eviction. Uh, Kevin's fate is pretty much sealed. But there's so much more that we'll have to unpack tomorrow night. Uh, it'll be a jam-packed panel. Taryn, Brent, Kirsten McInnes, and Phil Thompson will join us for our triple eviction wire to wire recap on Thursday night. Uh, be sure to join us live 10, 15 PM Eastern time. Of course, uh, it's the end of the month of September. Uh, of course, uh, tomorrow being the first day of a new month and a great time to uh, jump in on our Patreon program, robiswebsite.com slash patron. Get in on our patron Facebook community. Uh, we've got a Discord server, patron podcast feed, and more. This Friday, I'll be doing our monthly patron cast where I'll be taking hours of calls from our patrons over on Friday. And then I will get the triple eviction started on with our pregame uh, show, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern. A uh, great day to jump in on Thursday. Get in live. We'll take your calls one hour before the start of the triple eviction uh, for the patrons. Rob, the podcast on the Big Brother eviction night pre-game show uh, that's going to be on Thursday night. And then, of course, you can follow us on social media. We share a bunch of clips from the episodes. Uh, Twitter, at Rob's a Podcast, at RJP Grams, on Instagram or on Facebook. Rob has a podcast. And, of course, now a lot of people uh, may not be following this very closely, but we have a big election coming up. It's coming up uh, in a little over one month rob is a podcast strongly considers all americans who are of age to vote and participate in our democracy to find out more about getting registered to vote start thinking about this people it's november 3rd it's right around the corner head on over to vote.gov uh, Melissa, I know this weekend uh, you're going to be on a panel that's uh, that, that's coming. Up. And Mari, uh, you Mari too, correct? Up. Right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are you What are you two up to? Yeah, we're going to be discussing um, women and reality TV and what the deal is with that. Uh, and then <laughs> also we're going to have a text bank party, um, mm -hmm. and everyone's going to join in to um, encourage people to vote yep. um, and just kind of get the word out there on that. And so it should be really good. There's going to be a great panel um, and we're just going to talk about everything. It should be kind of casual and people can ask questions or bring mm -hmm. up points that they're interested in in regards to like what it's like to be a woman on reality TV or, you know, that sort of thing. Yep. It is, we were really lucky that Supermajority reached out to us mm -hmm. to participate in this panel. So I can't wait to talk 
reality TV, talk women in reality TV with all of the fans, everybody who signs up, and yeah. then can't wait to then get out the vote with everybody with the tech spanking session because um, I I definitely wanted to do something to get out the vote for this election. And so when they approached me, I was like, oh, perfect. I can do that. I can I sit down that. and talk. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> That's yeah. easy. <laughs> yeah. So if you're interested, just um, we've all tweeted out the links so you yep. can go check out our Twitters, but um, you have to go and register for it so that they can send you the information and the Zoom link and stuff. Yep. Um, and so, yeah, I still need to do that. But yeah, we'll re- <laughs> I'll retweet mine tonight. I'll retweet yeah. it as mm-hmm. well. And yep. we can figure that out. Um, I'm okay. also That's Saturday. Playing, yes, that yep. is this Saturday, Saturday at 5 p.m. Uh, yeah, Eastern. So I Eastern yes. or 2 p.m. PST, whatever it yeah. is, my, <laughs> my time. But mm-hmm. um, I also believe I'm going to be um, watching the episode tomorrow night uh, live with Alex Kidwell. So oh. that should be fun. Um, should be a good time. I've not ever like live streamed while watching. So it should be mm-hmm. very oh, interesting because oh. you'll get to see how I literally just stand and pace around the room <laughs> like, oh my God, oh my God, you got to win the competition. And so you're going to walk away from the computer? I, I don't mean to do it, but I like, if I'm stressed out, I like get up and I pace and I'm like, okay, okay, okay. So it could be good, could also be really bad. So we shall. Melissa's going to have the squeaky toy herself this time. All right. Um, Mari, where mm-hmm. can people keep up with everything you're up to? Yep. You can find me on Twitter at Mari Talks Too Much. Um, that's two, like the number two. And I'll just be there. Uh, I won't be talking about Big Brother. <laughs> mm-hmm. What do you normally talk about? Wrestling? The Ravens? Talk, yes, wrestling, the Ravens when they're not losing. The challenge? <laughs> the challenge, yes. I can't wait for The Bachelor. Can't wait for um, Amazing Race. So, like, oh, Mass Singer sometimes, but not too often. I, I really don't watch the shows. I just like to watch when they reveal the people. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because yeah. I have no patience. Yes. Um, but yeah, just all reality TV, basically. I love reality TV. Definitely um, this vote stuff, everything that's vote, voting with um, this November and all that. So just just a little bit of everything. And where there. can people find all that? <laughs> at Mari Talks Too Much at Twitter. Two like the number two. Okay. All right. Mari, uh, <laughs> great to have you back, of course. Thank you, guys. Uh, Matt, what are you up to? What am I up to? How do I follow all of the uh, great things that are uh, going on with uh, with Melissa and Mari? Um, watch Glee, everybody. Uh, Amon yes. and I are still doing our podcast, uh, The Choir Room. If you want to check that out uh, on all places, you can find podcasts. If you uh, used to be a fan of Glee or if you want to rewatch it on Netflix, go ahead. And uh, we're having a fun time with, uh, with that. You know, 2020 is not... The, the best year by any means, but uh, we've made it a good time with uh, with all that. So there's that. I can't wait for tomorrow night. I really, 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 really can't wait to see some of these people get out of the house and uh, move <laughs> on in this fun. season. So I'm looking yeah. forward to that. Yeah. And uh, at Matt Ligori on Twitter, I'll be uh, tweeting my excitement tomorrow night, no matter what happens. Okay. Be sure to follow Matt as well. By the way, uh, triple exit interview uh, coming up on Woo-hoo! Friday. We'll have, uh, we'll have four questions for each of the three people. Okay. Nice. Nice. Uh, so uh, be on the lookout for that to drop uh, in your podcast feed on uh, Friday, uh, probably Friday afternoon. All right. And of course, Melissa Denny. Melissa, uh, what else are you up to, Melissa? Um, I am almost finished editing the uh, next Drunk History episode, so <laughs> it should be good. I just need to put the, uh, you know, the music in there, the classic Big Brother tune. Nice. So we mm-hmm. shall, we shall see. It should be a uh, kind of funny, probably more embarrassing than anything, but you know, it should be good. good well, so what, that. what will you spend the hundred dollars on if you win <laughs> the bet from Tarrant? Have you thought about that? Mm, more wine for Drunk History. Hey, okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't know. <laughs> I'll All right. figure that that one out. Have to see. Uh, a lot of in- <laughs> a lot of intrigue uh, going into tomorrow night. All right. Well, everybody, uh, thank you so much for joining us. This is a fun podcast tonight. We'll be live with the biggest night of the Big Brother season tomorrow. Can't wait for the triple eviction. Thanks so much to Scott St. Pierre behind the scenes. Take care, everybody. Have a good one. Bye.